Hello and welcome to the Paper Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan James. Today I would like to take a little departure and focus in on um, a specific bank that I found extremely fascinating that has to do with uh, cryptocurrency, that had to do with FTX fallout um, in, in the bank. Um, I've listened to their earnings calls, and now that we're into January, uh, today is actually January, uh, actually today is February 1st of 2023, so we've now had time for all the banks to, um, you know, produce their call reports, so I've got their um, financials, and so all of this is public information, and what is interesting to me is um, Silvergate has, you know, a network dealing with all the exchanges majority of the exchanges and have really have grown massively but in one quarter one quarter wiped away their history of retained earnings you know how did this happen and you know this clearly has the bank and regulators up in arms because after this happened i remember seeing i've got emails you know they're checking all the banks, you know, what is your volatility to the crypto industry? And, you know, I understand why there's concern, especially based on this. So I want to look at a few things I, I have, you know, we're just going over a little bit of face value, not diving in too deep. But from you look at September's car report in Silvergate, they had an income of $117 million. Now you go to the end, loss of $729 million. So in one quarter, $846 million was lost. I mean, I think this is bigger than what was happening in pre-2009. You saw a lot of banks go under with bad failed loans. It usually took um, a few quarters even a year to have this such a massive. But I do have to give it to them. Um, there was such a huge loss on deposits that it is amazing that Silvergate was able to sell enough securities to fund it. And um, so let's go through a little bit of kind of what happened and feel free, listen to earnings calls, give me your thoughts and um, you know, what you think they had nearly, I believe it was around 12 billion on deposits related to crypto exchanges um, estimated maybe 1 billion that FTX was holding. And in one quarter, nearly 8 billion in deposits was lost was um, taken. So they, in fact, they had a run on the bank. So what did they do to do that? How do they fund that run? Well, they had to liquidate securities. So in this day and age, you know, they, I believe they thought they were doing the prudent thing was, Hey, we're not loaning all of our cash out. We need to have liquidity. So they had a lot of bonds, but you go back in September, you know, they had a uh, AOCI of negative half a billion dollars, $513 million. So, they had the bonds, but with the rise in rates, you know, the bonds and securities, um, you know, values were less than their, um, what they paid for. So when they liquidated them, you know, that was the huge loss. And then there was another 175 million or so of loss that they had to charge off that um, um, they were no longer going forward in their own um, crypto, their own uh, coin. So they had to um, charge off all the goodwill they had associated with that industry. But going back, you know, in their earnings calls, they kept on saying it was a crisis of confidence, crisis of confidence that led to this. But, you know, this reminds me exactly of concentration limits. So you had a bank that has grown tremendously, but they're highly uh, weighted on deposits on exchanges. So, you know, it goes back to bankers, Banker 101. You need to look at your concentrations, not just your concentrations in loans, but you got to look at your concentrations of deposits. If your deposits are in one industry, you also have to segment out those concentrations and look at the percentage of, you know, that one customer. If they were to leave you, if that's 10% of your deposits, 8% of your deposits, that's going to make a pretty big dent. And if all those customers that aggregate up to 80% of your deposits, if they are Basically, all exchanges or their private equity funds that are funding the crypto industry, what do you think is going to happen? If there's negative things that are going to happen in the industry, they're all going to be affected all at once. So there was no diversification within the product. So as soon as that happened, I mean, this clearly is not a recipe on building a legacy foundation. If one quarter wiped away nearly half of your equity. So when you look at their equity, you know, they had $1.1 in total bank equity in September of 2022. 
now December, $572 million in equity. I mean, that just wiped away nearly half of their equity right there. Um, and it wasn't for bad loans. This was just for deposits leaving the institution and they had to liquidate securities and sell them as quickly as possible to fund them. Um, so it's amazing. They're still here. They still got, you know, they're still well capitalized because they didn't have a ton of loans out there. But, um, you know, now when you look at their model, you know, their model of making non-interest fees, if you're going to go into a segment like this crypto industry, and you're going to make your money off of fees associated with transfers. You know, they really need to look back at this model because when you look at service charges and deposit accounts for, you know, 29.6 uh, million roughly the total for the year, well, they had another 327 million based on uh, interest income. So clearly that 29 million, roughly 30 million and uh, service charges associated with their networks and banking the industry. That is not enough income to fund their whole bank. They were relying also on, they had low cost of deposits. So the deposits were zero to no cost. And then when that left and they had to borrow um, temporarily from the federal home loan banks to stay afloat, they went from a zero deposit cost to probably four, four and a half percent, five percent. So that is just a huge. So it blew their margins out. They had no choice but to sell the securities because the securities, you know, the yields, I'm sure, are way less now than they are of uh, borrowings from the federal home loan banks. So they had no other choice and sell their securities at a loss. So, you know, basically, I don't see that this is going forward. They're really going to have to change. But if they're going to make money based on just the transaction volume and the and the uh, service charges and deposit accounts, you do, that is not a recipe just to have a bank. You know, they're a one-legged stool and things need to happen. But, you know, could this have been foreseen? I don't know. I wasn't in that, in that bank. Um, I, I hate uh, Monday morning quarterbacks. But what I can tell you is this, you know, reminds me of a lot of, um, I know I had to change things in our institution going pre-2009. I felt we were one-legged stool funded by strictly commercial loans that were funded by, um, you know, majority of CDs that were tied. So when we had the lower rates on commercial loans to keep the loans afloat and keep the borrowers from defaulting on their loans, I still had fixed expense costs. So I was a one-legged stool and I knew for the vitality of our institution, we had to have alternate sources of income and not be dependent on one source. So, you know, this is a, um, a lesson. And of course, what is this going to mean? When next audit you have, what do you think the regulators are going to look at? They're going to look at your asset liability plan. They're going to look at your concentrations. They're going to look at your loan concentrations. They're going to look at your deposit concentrations. And you're going to have to do a good job of saying, you know, yes, we are in this segment, but we are breaking down and, you know, and we're diversifying within the segment. So, um, you know, let this be lessons if you have any questions. Uh, additional thoughts. If there are any other banks who would like to, you know, go through and look at their financials. Um, I love studying the banks that I um, like and admire, you know, constantly. As soon as their quarterly call reports go up, I analyze them, look at them, see what they're doing right, see what I can learn from. And I encourage all of you to do the same. If you don't know what a call report and you're in banking, um, you know, I don't know what you've been doing in your career, but you need to understand call reports. I don't care if you're on the lending side, if you're on the deposit side, um, right here, I mean, basically, between the call reports and 10Ks, it tells the playbooks of what the other financial institutions are thinking. I encourage you to go look at them. Thank you. Please uh, make some comments. Hit like, subscribe, and thank you for listening.